non-post-processing vertical holes over other holes that are larger than the original hole that you want to be able to put the screw through in Fusion 360. Hello everyone, my name's Adam and welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at solving this. It's a bit of a design problem that has many solutions, but I believe this is probably the best. So recently you might have seen over on 3D Printing Nerd, Joel Telling creating some draw handles for his set of drawers that his dad made from it. This nice big wooden desk. Desk, workshop, work table, whatever you want to call it. It looks pretty awesome and it's very functional. Through designing this draw handle, Joel came across one of these issues with 3D printing that's not particularly common and really nice to have a solution for when you come across it. In his most recent video, he did cover an upgrade to his design where it improved his uh, capability to print this way, but I don't think it was perfect as it took a lot of post-processing and as he mentioned in the video, that took quite a bit more time than he was hoping. So, I think I've got a better solution. Let's take a look at what that is. So first let's take a look at what the issue looks like. In this uh, slicer window, we've got the whole part sliced ready to go. But if you take down a look at this specific layer right here, it's got to do a bridge over this area, but it's also got to do this perimeter in the middle. Now, if you imagine the print going over it, it can bridge all the way to two sides, but as soon as it gets to this point, it's got to go back or carry over and start this bit. And then it's somehow got to draw a circle that's not really attached to anything especially as this material at either side won't really have formed very well. One way you can get around this is by using this method that Joel used. You create your sketch on this face in here, protect that edge, protect that edge, and then you can extrude that up, that profile and that profile, 0.2 millimeters or minus 0.2 millimeters in this case. Let's take a look at how that looks in the slicer. So here we are again, taking a look at that same layer and you can see how it now bridges all the way across. And the next layer up, it'll have material below it to draw those circles in the middle and then continue to draw that circle all the way up as far as it needs. But that leaves you with material that's in the way. You have to get rid of it somehow. You can sometimes push it into the hole with a screw if it doesn't really matter, or you can drill it out. But either way, it can be a bit of a pain. Wouldn't it be nice if you could draw that area without having to have a bridge all the way across. I think it would be lovely. So let's take a look at how we can do that. So we're actually going to start it in the same way. We're going to create a sketch on this face. Uh, I'm going to just create a cross section. What were the bits that it had problems with? We know it bridged all the way across this edge and it was bridging all the way down here. But when it got to this point, when it got to the edge of that hole, so it had to draw a hole, part of the hole instead of just the bridge, that was an issue. So what if we did that on the next layer? So what if for this layer, when we got to that point, we stopped? We didn't need to do any more bridge. We don't need to worry about the hole. We just cut out the areas that we know won't print. It looks a little bit like this. We create a sketch, create a rectangle from two points, put it across the two sides like this, make that edge tangent to that edge, and this one tangent to this one. And then you do a cut, and we're going to do that minus 0.2. Now that we've cut that out, let's put it back in the slicer and have another look at how that's going to slice. So now we've got our bridging, but we don't have any serious issues. We've got a bridge that comes all the way up to where the edge of the hole would be. It stops, goes around it, and then carries on on the other side. It's only 0.2 millimeters, so depth-wise, it doesn't make a significant difference, but it means that we're controlling where that bridging is and we're not going to be printing material that we know won't really work very well. But that's only half the story. We still have this next layer where we've got a similar issue. It's been reduced significantly, but we have a bridging across in the other direction and then a circle that's interrupting it. Hopefully we can get rid of that as well. So let's go back to our model and see what we can do about that. So now we're back in the CAD. We want to do a similar operation to we, that we did before, but sort of rotate it 90 degrees. This time our bridging is going in this direction, sort of up and down relative to how we're looking at it, but we want to stop anything that comes past this area. So let's create a sketch here, create our sketch that I think we already did. Now we just need to draw a rectangle over this area and do pretty much what we did before. We want to make that edge tangent to that one and that edge tangent to, oh come on, 
to that one. And again, we're going to use the extrusion tool, highlight our areas that we want to cut out, and again, minus 0.2. Now that we've cut that next layer out, you can see how we've got our bridging prepared for the left to right direction, and then for the up and down, and then we've just got these small little rounded triangles left around the circle. Let's move this again into Slicer and see how that operation would work. So this is before we get anywhere, we're just doing walls. As we rise up the layers, we've got this layer. So it's bridging for most of it, and it draws a rectangle in the middle, which is fine. It's perimeter, but it's still bridging, so we should be good. On the next layer up, yep. now we're bridging again in the opposite direction, 90 degrees to the other layer. And again, it's all just straight across. So there's no extra circles, there's no more drawing. It's really very simple. Shouldn't be too much of a problem there. We then get to this layer where we do now have a circle, but if you look, I mean, dimensionally, the amount of material that's gonna be uh, an issue here is really very minimal. There's probably more you could do in the can if you really, really wanted to try and improve this further. But at this point, any deformation you get is gonna be really small and you've already raised up two layers away from the hole that's important so even if that droops down a little it's probably going to droop down maybe 0.2 maybe 0.3 mil which is pretty negligible and it won't interfere with the hole that you were trying to print so that's how you do that now obviously it is a little bit more complicated to draw but in the long term it's going to save you a whole lot of time when you're trying to post process parts and get them to actually function so yes, that was today's scrappy video on how to do non-post-processing vertical holes over other holes that are larger than the original hole that you want to be able to put the screw through in Fusion 360. Hopefully that video is useful for you, especially if you're designing in CAD and you've come across this issue before. It can be quite a pain to find a decent way around it, and hopefully this is a good way. I found this by looking at the Prusa STL, so a little while back before the Mark III came out, they released STLs and I had a look at them before getting the printer just to see what sort of features were new, what was different and what was interesting about them and different compared to the Mark II S. And I came across this. Quite a nice little feature, I think. Don't forget to subscribe to Joel Telling's channel, 3D Printing Nerd, if you haven't already. I mean, if you're watching this, then chances are you already know about his channel, but definitely go and subscribe if you haven't already. Like and subscribe to me if you want to see more videos like this one, tips and tricks on Fusion 360, as well as other design and 3D printing related stuff. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter to see some of the behind the scenes stuff I do. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.